Okay, so Apple announced their newly updated 13-inch MacBook Pro, and this is a device that's been updated across the board. Everything has just been refreshed, except for the screen. It's still using a 13-inch screen, but there's this weird, like, misinformation or negativity around the launch of this product, particularly about the CPU. So I thought I'd make a video just to clarify some things, and hopefully this will save you some money if you're interested in picking up one of the new MacBook Pros. So the thing that's controversial right now, and I woke up this morning, people are tweeting at me, people are writing my old videos, like comments about this. People are upset, visibly upset, that Apple is using old 8th gen CPUs in these new 2020 MacBook Pros. And it's like, people are like, Dave, how could they do this? F Apple, this is the worst. Listen, I get you're upset, but let me explain what's going on here. When you look at devices like a 13 inch MacBook Pro, the difference between an eighth gen Intel CPU and a 10th gen Intel CPU, if they'd used one in the base model of that MacBook Pro is very small. The only time you'd see a big benefit going to that 10th gen chip is if you're doing stuff that's graphically capable. Like if you're doing video editing or playing games or anything that's got graphical requirements, yes, those new 10th gen chips will be better for it. They claim like an 80% improvement based on my tests on Windows-based laptops. It's like closer to 50, maybe 60% real world improvement. They are better, but here's the thing. Not everybody wants that stuff. Not everybody wants extra GPU power for their workflow. So the fact that they're using those older eighth gen chips in the base model MacBook Pro is actually a really good thing because you know what else comes with those new 10th gen chips? A fatty price tag. Every Windows laptop that I reviewed in the past like six months that used those new 10th gen chips, they've been bumped up in price by like 150, maybe 200 bucks sometimes. It is something that Intel is doing. It's not Apple obviously, or any manufacturer. When Intel raises the price of those new chips, that the cost of the product goes up. So every company that's been doing this, like the consumers get screwed, right? We're just paying more for stuff that we may not necessarily need. The fact that Apple is using those old eighth gen chips that have slower GPUs, but still very capable quad core processors, it's actually a good thing because we don't have to pay extra money. Like this stuff is already really expensive from Apple. If you're a developer and all you're doing is just like building on Xcode and you just want a good quad core processor, you don't want that GPU. You would want to pay extra for that GPU, but they all have these newly updated keyboards. We've talked about this forever. The Magic Keyboard in these new MacBooks are so much more reliable. And this marks the end of the whole butterfly keyboard era. Like this is it. There's no more butterfly switches in the entire Apple laptop repertoire, which is awesome. Now they had to like, in order to fit that new keyboard in here, they had to make it a little bit thicker. I think it's 0.7 millimeters thicker. It's relatively insignificant. It was well worth it. Now, if you do decide to go with a 10th gen chip, like if you decide to upgrade from the base model to the 10th gen stuff, in addition to that faster GPU, you also have access to faster and more RAM. Like you can get up to 32 gigs and it is low power DDR4, which the older stuff didn't have access to. In certain applications and workflows, that faster RAM can be useful, but most people, it's not a significant upgrade. It is nice though. It's still a 720p webcam and there's no Wi-Fi 6 on any of the configurations of the 13 inch MacBook Pro. Now, if you're someone who's looking at these new devices with the interest of using it for video editing because of that new GPU, you're like, hey, maybe that might be a good fit for me. It's really dependent, like the performance is extremely dependent on A, the application that you're using and B, the camera that you're using. So I've tested these GPUs with Premiere and like it, it really depends. Sometimes you're getting good performance, sometimes you're getting very unimpressive performance. So you'll have to wait for my regular review of the device to actually get some better data. But if you're a video editor, you wanna wait for your specific workflow to be tested before you go in on it. Now, compared to the 13 inch MacBook Air, and this is a question I feel like a lot of you guys have been asking, like should I get that 13 inch MacBook Air or this new 13 inch MacBook Pro? They are quite different. And because of the price tag, you might be drawn to the MacBook Air. It is a lighter machine ever so slightly, and it's also got a slightly longer battery life and it's a little bit cheaper, but it is not built for processor intensive tasks. Like the moment you push it hard for an extended period of time, it chokes and the Airs have always done that. That really is the weakness of the MacBook Air. The Pro is just more suited for even moderately intensive tasks. It also has a brighter screen, better speakers, but a large number of people would already be really happy on the MacBook Air and wouldn't need the extra features on the Pro. Now, if you were interested in that upcoming rumored 14 inch device, 
who knows when it's going to come out. Maybe it's going to be for like a, an ARM-based MacBook. Maybe it's going to be for an AMD-based MacBook, which would be awesome. Uh, who knows, but it's not this one. So we just have to keep waiting. Uh, I'm just going to throw one last thing out there. If you were considering like a higher spec 13-inch MacBook Pro, one of these new ones, I just want to push the idea out of a 16-inch MacBook Pro. Like those are just way more capable, but because those things are in the refurbished store now, like they're available for a significant discount, it may be worth it. Like just test out the configurations, see if you can get a 16 inch device for not too much more than a high spec 13 inch MacBook Pro because it's just a way more capable system if you're willing to carry something that's bigger and heavier and has a shorter battery life. Okay, I think that wraps us up. Hope you guys are informed of what's going on with Intel and Apple, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. I will see you guys next time.